wow, there's a lot of faces here. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Jordan Lathery, for those of you that don't know me. Um, and I've been asked to give my testimony today. Um, it is a long one. I really did try to condense it. Um, and I also took multiple public speaking courses from high school and college, but I still tend to talk really fast when I'm nervous. So my husband's going to give me the, the slowdown. <laughs> I give him the speed it up. He gives me the slowdown. Um, I'm also going to try not to cry, but I, I might. Okay. So my story actually starts when I was born. I was born at Christ Hospital um, where they diagnosed me with a heart murmur. Now, any babies diagnosed with any type of cardiac-related issues usually have a cardiac appointment follow-up. So then I went at nine days old. Um, normally, when babies are born, they can have an opening in their arterius ductus. Please do not ask me what that is. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it will usually close on its own. Mine, however, did not. And it sounds bad, but it was actually the Lord protecting me. Because if it had closed, I would have had severe brain damage from the loss of oxygen. Um, I was immediately scheduled for open heart surgery where they did a temporary fix called a pulmonary trunk patch. They told my mom that it could work for like 10 minutes or the rest of my life. They really had no idea. Um, one week later, they called my mom after they had their annual um, round table meeting, the whole cardiac floor at Children's Meets. And that's when my mom asked the lead doctor, if this was your daughter or granddaughter, what would you do? He said, I would immediately put her on transplant medicine and add her to the transplant list for a completely new heart. Um, they also suggested um, that I could get a mechanical valve as an option, but that also meant that I would have multiple surgeries as I grew to replace the smaller parts with bigger parts. Um, my mom, knowing this, um, didn't know what to do, and after she got off the phone with them, she immediately called my Aunt Diana, um, who, oh man, I love my Aunt Diana. Oh, goodness. Um, she prayed and read scripture all night long. Um, to everyone's surprise, though, my mom told the doctors no on everything. Uh, she said either God will heal her by taking her with him into heaven, or he'll let me have her, and he healed me. Um, thankfully, almost every checkup has been perfect. We've had a couple scares, but I'm still here, so. Um, my life wasn't perfect. Hmm. When I was a toddler... My biological father um, oh I did not know I was gonna cry <laughs> I did but I was hoping I wasn't going to um, he left um, the last decent memory I have of him I was around the age of four or five um, I never heard from him again all throughout my childhood or um, my teenage years um, Every once in a while, we would get a, um, a sum of money because family services found out that he had a job. Um, but as soon as he figured out that he was not getting a check, he would leave and go to somewhere else. Um, so that created a lot of resentment in me towards him. And not only did he completely abandon his wife, his two stepdaughters, and his biological daughter, um, he decided that he was not going to help with any of my medical bills or schooling or extracurriculars growing up. He was like, I didn't exist anymore. Um, however, I was blessed. Um, the Lord gave me my dad, Scott. Um, he did step up to become my earthly dad, whom I love and cherish dearly. There's still nothing like an emptiness knowing your own Biological father did not care about you. Um, I never really realized how much it had affected me until I reached my teen years. I went from boyfriend to boyfriend and eventually got with someone who liked to party and drink and smoke weed. Um, that became my weekend normal. Over the years, I began to date people that lived in that scene, um, and it just wasn't good for anyone. I was never home, and when I was, I was in constant arguments with my parents, which made me not want to be home even more. But the choices I made when I wasn't home were terrible. Um, I was constantly surrounded by people, but I always felt so alone. 
Some of them even would claim to be Christians, myself included. Um, I knew God. I grew up in church. I went to a private Christian elementary school, but I never had the personal relationship with the Lord. I was full of anger and resentment. I struggled with my purpose and my past. I couldn't forgive myself for the things I was doing, and I honestly hated even looking at myself in the mirror for too long because I did not recognize who I was. Uh, one day, I was scrolling my usual YouTube and came across Christian family YouTubers. Um, I've always longed and dreamed to become a mom, so I often followed moms on social media even though I had no idea who they were. I still do that. <laughs> um, they had what I'd always wanted. I wanted to get married to someone that respected me, believed in God, pushed me to become a better person, and had the same dreams and goals and wants that I did. And I realized I was not going to get that with where I was in my life and who I was surrounding myself with. James 1, 21, 22 says, Therefore get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So that's what I did. Um, I quit partying and smoking weed and heavily drinking, and I just decided I was done. I left the sinful relationships and all it had entailed and started working towards becoming the Christian I always wanted to be and the person God created me to be. I knew he could heal me emotionally and spiritually, and I knew he was always there waiting for me if I had just quit running away from him. The grace and forgiveness and acceptance I craved never fulfilled me because I was looking in all of the wrong places. I knew that if I really wanted to make lasting life changes, I needed to let go of the lie that people and things could fill my heart and soul fully. I surrounded myself with Christians and became more active in the church I was attending. I rededicated my life to Christ, and I got rebaptized in 2019. I'm still learning, and I always will be, and I know that life is hard sometimes, but I also know that the Lord tells us in Hebrews 4, 15 through 16, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every aspect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. How amazing is it that I can have such a gross past? But be completely and utterly forgiven and met with nothing but mercy and grace. And you can too. I know I'll continue to grow through hardships, go through hardships, but I'll never feel alone. I find comfort in Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I'm with you always to the end of age. Galatians 2.20 sums up my new identity perfectly. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live, in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I hope today hearing my story has helped you in some way, and I pray that you know God is always there waiting for you. Satan's power over us is nothing compared to the free promises of God.